once we have designed our experiment and uh, we have decided that you know, we've decided on whether or not we want to do an observational or experimental study, um, one of the next steps that we need to do is we need to actually take a sample. And so our question here should be is what characterizes a good question? Oh, sorry, not a good question, a good sample. Okay, so let's kind of review once again what this sample is. Remember, when, when we did our experimental design or when we had our question, we had some group that we were actually interested in. And from that group, we have decided most of the time it's really impractical to actually go and measure every single instance uh, of our population. It just is. So what we are left to do is when we run our experiment is to take a sample that hopefully can give us some insight into our population. Okay, so here's the question. What characterizes a good sample? So a good sample, if it is good, and we've talked about this a little bit, is that it well represents population okay so now what does that exactly mean um, there are lots of ways that we can take a sample um, there are s many good ways and there are also many really bad ways to take a sample um, but ultimately our sample is supposed to represent the population the closer that it does at representing the population the better our sample is or the, or the closer that the results that we're going to get from our sample are actually going to be reflected in what's true about the population. Okay, so when we talk about this, there are actually some different ways that we can sample. Uh, and so let's talk about these different sampling types. Maybe we'll call them sampling methods. And what I'm going to try to do is I'll try to also draw a picture um, kind of off to the side uh, so that we can get some visual with these different types of methods. Okay, so our sampling methods, let's start off with our first one, which is called simple random. A simple random sample. Okay, so a simple random sample uh, could be as... Uh, like this. So let's say that we actually did know our population. Okay. We gave everybody a number in that population and we wrote it on a ping pong ball and we put it into a gigantic bag. And what we'd then do is we'd randomly pull out, reach our hand in, swirl it around a couple times, grab a ball out, and whoever was on that number we would then go and sample. So that's like one way to do a simple random. Um, another way, like for example, maybe we are at, we're at Casper College and we want to do some sort of survey or study on the student population. Well, we could go and talk to everybody. That would be hard. So instead, maybe we could have a random number generator that would, um, we'd assign everybody on the enrollment a number, and then we'd just assign this random number generator to give us 15 numbers, and then we'd go and talk to the 15 people uh, that it picked out. So, in just kind of graphically, what you could think about for a simple random is if this is, that square represents our entire population, simple random does something like that, uh, where it's, there's kind of no rhyme or reason to where these are pulled out. We're just going to randomly uh, pull them out. Now, if we were to do another random sample, it would look totally different from where we would actually pull our sample um, our sample from. Now, uh, humans are really bad at thinking about random numbers. We're terrible at it. Uh, and so there are lots of ways that we can have computers help us. Uh, computers aren't perfect either, um, but there are, are, are ways that we can produce random numbers. Okay, so that's our first way. Simple random is pretty good, and a lot of times our simple random does a good job at approximating or representing our entire population. 
All right, there's another way that we can do this, another good one, and it's called systematic sampling. Okay, so systematic sampling could be something like this, where we uh, take the entire um, enrollment list at Casper College, we put it in a big list, and we take every tenth person. Uh, and so that's systematic. We kind of put them in, in a row, and we take every tenth person. So if we were kind of looking at it graphically, uh, we could do something like this. I'll give myself another kind of rectangle, and let's give us some boxes. And I'm going to take every third for this one. So I'm going to take this guy. 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 And I'm going to take that guy. So that would be kind of working from one side to the next, going down the rows. Every third is I'm going to measure. So that would be systematic sampling. Um, can, it can work. Sometimes simple random sampling is a little bit easier than doing systematic, uh, but that, that's another method that we can go through and actually take our sample. Okay, another one that we could do is called cluster sampling. All right, so cluster sampling is handy. Um, because what we could do is instead of like looking at individual people, um, maybe what instead we would do is we would look at um, every class that is in session at 10 o'clock, and we randomly select the different classes um, at 10 o'clock, and we would then, within each of those classes that we select, that we would measure every single person within those classes, and that's just kind of called cluster uh, sampling. So this is a this is a good method, and it, it works. Uh, like if you were also talking about maybe you were, we're trying to do like voter uh, voter registration or maybe voter preferences in a city, uh, instead of going and talking to every single person, uh, maybe you just pick out city blocks and you try to talk to every person in city blocks and you do cluster like that. You can also do it like per household. Um, talk to everybody within these randomly selected houses. Uh, cluster sampling is, is very useful. So what we could do is maybe here, uh, I'll do kind of my class example. So this would be like bio, um, history, uh, math. Uh, we could do uh, physics. Uh, we could do health. And we would randomly select you know, our classes throughout the day. And we could measure everyone within history and everyone within that physics class at you know, 10 AM. And that, that could be like an example of cluster sampling. All right, let's do one more. Uh, another one that we can do is called a stratified sampling. Okay, so stratified sampling we use if we want to make sure that we well represent like specific demographics. Uh, so suppose for this one, or for a survey, maybe we really wanted to make sure that we get like some minority populations in there. And so maybe suppose that we know that, uh, let's maybe look at our, oh, I don't know, we'll, let's, let's do race because it, it's an easy one. Uh, so maybe for a stratified sampling we know that you know, there's a big group of, uh, of Caucasian, there's a big group of African American, there's a big group of Hispanic. And we want to make sure that each of those groups are well represented. And we know that roughly in the population that 50% uh, are Caucasian, we've got 25% Hispanic, and we've got 25% of African American. We would want then to make sure that our sample reflects that, that our sample has 50% Caucasian, 25% African American, and 25% uh, Hispanic. Okay, and that's how we do the stratified. And you can do it along all sorts of things. Maybe instead of race, maybe you wanted to do gender, where maybe you want to make sure that there's 50% male and 50% female. Uh, or maybe if it's age, and you could look, you could cut it into different um, age groups, you want to make sure that each of the age groups are represented. But stratified sampling is another way that we can do to help us make sure that our sample is well represented, well representative of our um, of our population. So. If our population, let me do a little picture here. So if our population 
you know, looks like that in our pie chart. And maybe I'll just do red, green, and blue. So red, green, blue, if this is the pop. Then we'd want our sample, and I'll show it by a smaller circle, smaller circle of our sample, to also mirror this with red, green, and blue. So that's stratified sampling. So those are like four good methods. One method that we want to avoid, um, which is a bad way to sample, is called convenience. OK, so real quick, these guys, good. And this guy is bad. All right, so convenient sampling, uh, in contrast to this, doesn't try to actually make a plan to well represent the population. Instead, what convenient sampling is is just what it says. It's an easy way to get a sample. So like an easy way to get a sample, maybe we're, once again we're talking about students at Casper College, is that we would sit outside of the union or outside of you know, any one of our big buildings and where we would set up a booth and we would just survey people coming out of there. Now the problem with that is that what we are really getting are, is a sample of people who, are, who actually use that area of campus. There are lots of people who maybe they're online students. They never come there. Uh, what if they are always in the automotive section and they never come down to where you are? So convenient sampling is exactly what it says, convenient, but it is a very poor way for you to get a sample that represents the population. So all in all, what characterizes a good sample? is that it represents the population. There are many methods that we can use, and we can actually combine a lot of these together to, to have like, we can have like stratified cluster sampling, or anyhow, there, there are lots of ways that we can combine these together to make our sample representative of our population. Um, but convenient sampling is poor because it doesn't try to like actually represent what the population is.